First, there was the week. Then, there was the combining. Now, it's time for the week of Big Boys 3. The Rebeginning. Yes, that's right. This time, it's not just a bunch of small figures that team up to be a reasonably sized combiner. This time, it's just a bunch of really big dudes. I'm going to try and do three videos this week with one coming out on Friday, just like the old days, but I'm going to be honest. Since reducing my schedule to two videos a week, I honestly no longer have any clue how I was able to make three a week for two years. It takes everything I have to do two. How in the hell did I pull off three for so long like it was nothing till I completely burnt out? Well, I guess that partially answers my question. Anyways, the week of Big Boys 3 will have three videos guaranteed. The question is whether or not it's an actual week or if it's going to be like a week and a half. Don't be surprised if the rebeginning is a Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday thing. And yes, I know about the reveals. Unfortunately, it is the week of Big Boys and I will not be interrupting it because reveals. Anyways, it's Titan's Return Trypticon. I could have and should have gotten this thing a long time ago, back when I used to see it for normal price at Fry's Electronics in like 2018. For those who have never heard of Fry's Electronics, imagine the single best, biggest electronics and computer parts store that ever existed on the planet, and that's not an exaggeration, but it's also a theme park and every Fry's location was different. My local one was themed after 20,000 leagues under the sea, which translates out to 69,000 miles. Nice. It was fucking awesome, and it's dead now, by the way. The building it was in has been turned into a Walmart, and I don't even know what happened to all the fish. It literally breaks my heart. Thank you, COVID. Tangent aside, since I didn't pick this up back then, I had to buy it pretty much right after the last week of Big Boys back in 2022 for simply too much money. But you know what? I'm pretty okay with it, because this thing is really cool and very toy, but it's also the size of a young child. So once again, we are dealing with a big boy. <laughs> Yes, I have the Transformers version of Godzilla, and he is very much appropriately sized, requiring me to use the big light box, so you all better appreciate the sacrifices I make for you. He creaks about as much as a fan's toys figure when you handle him, but at the same time, it doesn't rend my soul to listen to this like it does with fan's toys, and it doesn't feel brittle. I feel vindicated looking at this with not caring much for paint, because there's barely any here, but it looks so distinct and interesting because of all the different plastics they used. And believe me, it feels good to say that, because all too often I'm like, I don't much care for paint, but props on the paint. No. Fuck the paint. Sure, it's value, so when you get it, they aren't cheaping out on you, but at the same time, they could not do paint and just budget themselves better, so we get more in the actual areas that can't be done equally well by something else, like sculpting, gimmicks, posability, and transformation. And let me tell you, this has sculpting on lock. Every inch of this thing wants you to stop, look at it, and go, yeah, I can use that for a backdrop for some base photos. Makes sense knowing what this turns into. And this thing is positively rife with gimmicks. For starters, he's got his little buddy on his chest that becomes a titty cannon. I have bought full price deluxes that were less fun than this. Just a solid little carboy with a good transformation, a cool looking if monochromatic robot mode, solid posability, and a lot of play factor. He's also got his extendable shoulder cannons and his extendable head cannon that I choose to leave closed most of the time because it looks stupid. You are supposed to plug in him boy's head to activate this gimmick like ye olde minicon ports, but it's not locked at all, so you can just use your finger if you don't feel like going through the hassle. Lastly, you can feed him Headmasters. I don't know why, but this feels so weird to me. Toys that eat other toys is a super common thing. I mean, I just went to Walmart the other day and there was this big shark toy meant to swallow a diver that it comes with. Bit slanderous against sharks, but I saw that and was like, yeah, that's a normal toy. Here, it just feels unsettling is, I suppose, the nicest way I can phrase it. Maybe it's because it's a robot and this is not what robots are known to do. Though it's fun, it's still a fun gimmick to have, and I suppose you can make a sport out of this. Headmaster Basketball. And in order to get them out, you can open and close his stomach for some base function, plus it's just a neat bit of storage. So don't let me detract too much from this, but mm, yeah, Steve's out. Well, while we're looking at this moshot, sorry for that, we might as well talk about the head. It's so cool with its neck sculpted in techno gore. And what's that? Unlike the Ark, it's not a brick. How could they be so generous? Though it is mounted in a weird way, so when you turn it, it looks like this. Every inch of this noggin looks so cool. Though I am noticing that the figure is not as dark as the show model is supposed to be now that I'm inspecting it so closely. Like, why is it medium gray instead of black? I don't know if the eyes should be counted as light piping. I mean, they kind of are light piping, but I feel like it's more just a byproduct of the fact that they put clear plastic all over this thing and handled it all correctly that causes it to result in this effect. And now that I'm really looking at the head, I'm wondering if this plate on the side is meant to have a faction badge on it. There was a sticker sheet that came with this that I didn't bother with because coincidentally, like I explained last time, I hate applying stickers. It's so stressful. I don't want to mess it up by putting it on crooked. At least with paint, if you do it wrong, you can just strip it off and do it again. With stickers, if you do it wrong, you're down a sticker. It's a really cool cyber dino head, and it does this. <laughs> but seriously, do I need to explain why Mecha Godzilla is cool? It's Godzilla, but a robot, but a Transformers, but a playset, but a scaly vorophile. Well, I guess four out of five ain't bad. I talk about accessories, but I kind of already did that by mentioning the stickers and giving a brief overview of his little car dude that I can never be bothered to remember the name of. So posability is both great for what it is and not very good. 
head rotates, tilts way up, and has an opening and closing mouth, hands wiggle on ratchet joints, shoulders pull more than a 90 out to the side, but you can cheat it for even more, though that doesn't look great, he technically has a very stupid version of backwards butterflies, normal 90 elbows, I don't know what to call this joint on the wrists, like is it doing this or this, I can't tell. He's got a separate thumb and fingers, but for seemingly no reason, the fingers are attached to each other, so they have to travel as a pair. I'm really tempted to cut these in half. No ways. Why did I make myself film this? Hips kick forward and backwards maximum, but out to the side very little unless you cheat the hell out of it. I think slightly less than 90 knees, but it's sculpted in such a way that it's hard to tell. Though, it is impressive that these can do it at all because these legs are meant to do this. So good work on that, Hasbro. And an ankle tilt in with a toe down that's not helpful. Like, ever. So yeah, not super impressive on the posing. Pretty basic or bad in some areas. It's just cool that with some of the stuff this thing does, it still has the joints at all. But this guy ain't winning awards for any of it. Transformation to spaceship mode is really not doing very much. Basically, you're just straightening out the tail and flopping out the sides, and that's it. When it's this simple, I expect it to hold together better than this really does, and this has always kind of been my beef with Titan class figures. Most of them really feel like they should do more in the transformation. They have all of this budget and all of this real estate to do some really interesting stuff, and they just don't. These should flay open from every angle and have whole cities laid out inside of them. Ironically, the Ark is one of the few that even comes close to actually doing that. And I sincerely have to question if I'm done when this thing has these stupid friggin' little baby wings on backwards. Really, dude, this is your method. All of this is kept aloft by 20 feet of wing that's probably not only on backwards, but inside out as well, considering how much you seem to know how aviation works. Why do you have these at all at this point? If you can fly with these, you can fly without them as well. I talk about the features this has, but outside of rolling, this basically has all the same features of the base mode, but even less so, so I may as well convert to that before getting into it. Transformation is once again stupidly easy. You basically flip the cannons up this time, split the legs apart, and flip out two more sets of flaps. And see, this right here is my problem with base modes. Really. This. This is your base mode. Like, what are these? This is supposed to be ramp. No, I have seen ramp before. This is not ramp. What is even the point of ramp when there's a building-sized barricade between you and the main complex? It works as a kind of singular structure, like a resource depot or a communications emplacement, but it gives me so many mixed signals. Like, it's got these little doors for tiny people, and then it's got these even smaller skyscrapers for even tinier people. And I'd like to think that these are all four regular Cybertronians. But these only fit Headmasters, and I mean, fair, I can't just pretend that the Headmasters are full-size bots and whatnot, but then it's got the giant ramp meant for regular deluxes who would have to be colossal compared to the people meant to fit in here. So the scale does become confusing. And if this really is only meant for actual Headmasters, then who the hell is this for? In the Grand Continent, of the Transformers, barely anyone's a headmaster. So this is a base that can only be operated by a select crew of limited individuals. Don't get me wrong, it's fun. It is fun to slide the vehicles up and down that ramp. It is fun to have the characters posed on him. It is fun to imagine tiny people all around. And it's fun that it's got even more storage in the tail for a full-sized figure. Though you really don't want to keep them in that long term, that will not be good for them if you move this guy around. Especially that first part. The first part has me grinning like a school child. <laughs> ramp good. But this whole thing should be so much more than that. There is really no reason why the entire core of this thing doesn't explode open. This is supposed to be awesome because it's meant to be a giant city for Cybertronians that will stand up and kick your ass. But at best, it's a tractor trailer with a bunch of gear in it. And it's fun, it is that, but it's so tantalizingly close to being something so much more. Too much of this right now is rationalization. Too much of it is me using my imagination doing the work that this thing could be doing on its own to make me love it. This is getting by on how cool it is, but not necessarily how successful. And overall, the figure is on the razor's edge of worth or not worth. It is Schrodinger's value. A cool giant dinosaur robot who makes up for a lack of posability with a mountain of gimmicks that are really fun and an accessory that's as good as some other full-blown figures. But then you get to the transformations and I'm just desperately wanting more engagement from this thing. Do something interesting, have parts extend more or come out more. The legs are cool, but the legs alone are not enough. A little of it is satisfying, but you get to the champ of Omega Supreme just a few years later, and despite being a parts former, everything about his transformation is fun. Whereas this is pretty much the ghost of fun, fleeting glimpses of what could be so much cooler. And then the alt modes just aren't enough. The base mode is close. It's actually a legitimately good time, but it could be a lot more of one with just a few tweaks. And I'm not asking for the scale to make perfect sense. I get that it won't. I'm still happy with it if it doesn't, but it could try to be more of a city and not just a singular building in one. And then the ship mode is just the base mode with the most comical pretend wings I've ever seen. If you got this back in the day, you probably enjoy it. I like it for sure, but this isn't worth hunting down now, especially at modern prices. A large lad, a good lad, but one not living up to his potential, and his mother and I are very disappointed. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.